And let's speak now to Nathaniel Pete. He's the director of The Safety Box, which is a social enterprise that aids in youth development and antisocial behaviour. Nathaniel is here with us in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us on BBC News. Now, I don't know if you remember, we were he heard in a report that we played just a few moments ago an extremely angry lady who we actually spoke to here in the studio not long ago describing these youth as feral rats, really strong terms, real anger from communities. Mm -hmm. Now, you work with young people That's in right. these areas. That's What's right. your reaction to that? I mean, uh, for many of these youth, uh, they're, they're, they are not, they don't like the government, they don't like the authorities, they don't like law and order. They haven't had law and order in their families. Many of them grow up in broken homes. They come from uh, an area whereby they're surrounded by negative influences with negative people and uh, whereby there's no discipline, there's no control. And so then what we've got then is young people out there that have no control. I mean, they're very strong words to, to be used and uh, there's many youth which we work with, which I would not describe in the same way they have a great deal of potential however it's just channeled in the wrong direction I suppose and the use of the word feral though is, in, is interesting when you say that, that, that some of these young people don't have discipline at home don't have boundaries grow up in very negative environments and it's a kind of sort of survival of the fittest on, on the streets isn't it almost well I, I, would, I would agree and I, I would agree and I would also disagree I mean I grew up in, in the middle of Tottenham uh, as a young person I was surrounded by negative influences in fact uh, Mark Duggan went to the same school I went to uh, in Tottenham and uh, yet, nonetheless I didn't end up in the same way uh, as many of these young people they are surrounded by negative influences there's people which which influence them in a negative way which cause them to react and behave in a certain way uh, there is there is an area of there is an area here which is a conscious thought to do wrong. Uh, they want to feel powerful. They want to feel as though they're in control because people haven't invested in them. Uh, they, many of them suffer with uh, illiteracy problems. The, the key thing that I think we need to be looking at now is how do we solve the solution? How do we solve these problems? How can we get into the mind of the young person? The most dangerous thing on the street it's not the knife, it's not the gun, it's not the bats they're picking up. The most dangerous thing on the street is the minds of young people. How can we impact them, impact the minds? We need to do it through the schools. We need to provide positive role models within the schools. We need to have young people which are succeeding and developing and use these young people as role models for them. What if they're not going to school? If they're not going to school, then we need to engage them through the youth centres. We have to get back into the youth centre. I know a lot of money has been stripped away from youth centres. Uh, many of the provisions that were there in terms of the organisations that were providing such services as CV writing, interview skills, uh, developing their, their life skills and functional skill training, a lot of the funding has gone from this. So if we can get money back into the youth centres and help with these type of services which work alongside the schools, extended services to deal with those excluded young people to get them back in. But is there, is there is the will there though? I mean it, it, it's all very well laying on these um, ways to help these young people who perhaps have lost their way or perhaps don't have the, the privileged upbringings that some others do. But is the yes. will there for them to break out of these negative patterns? Do they want to? Well the thing is some of them don't. Some of them are locked in and they are continuing to carry on in, in this in this manner there needs to be the strong hand of the law they need to be held accountable for what they're doing uh, that is wrong but what we've got then is the youth, the ones which are below that early intervention, where you're talking about five and six, before they even get to the level whereby they're headstrong and they want to stay in that, we've got to get into the minds of the youth earlier. Early intervention is key. Five and six, when they begin to form the, their opinions, we've got to be in the primary schools. We have to be talking to the youth at a younger age. But th th this work is going on. You know, you do it, That's other right. people do it. That's it's right. happening in these areas. That's right. So how do we come to this, where this is going on in the streets of London? Well, there's a great deal of, there's a great deal of tension and, and, and what's taking place is a, a number of cuts which have taken place. Uh, many of the youth services are not doing it to the same capacity that they were doing it before. They've lost, they've lost staff because they're unable to pay the staff. Volunteers uh, are trying to put in, but they've also got to live. So, so we've got that problem. What we, what we really want is for the government to listen to the communities. I mean, I heard the interview with the, the mayor with uh, some of the people that were very angry, and the problem that was happening there is that he wasn't listening to them. And this is the key thing. The youth need people to listen to them. What do the young people need? What do they want? And that's how we're going to help the situation. That's how we're going to impact them, because then you're talking about respect. 
Respect happens when somebody listens to you, when you allow them to speak, when you don't stifle them with preaching and talking over them, this is what we think you need, but instead open up the ears and allow them yeah, to. Yes, so, well, I hear what you're saying. There will, of course, be some people watching who just think, right, enough, enough of the softly, softly yes. approach. We need to clamp down now. This is getting out of control. These people need to be brought to account. I, I would most certainly agree with those people. Um, and there's, a, there's, a, there's quite a divide. I mean, this is such a small percentage of young people that are doing this. Um, we we are having a huge impact. A, a, a huge impact, of course, but we need to we need to really firm up. We've got to get these people and uh, make these people accountable for what they've done, and we need to assist the youth that are coming up to stop them getting the same social unrest whereby they're going to be so reactive with the police. We've got to change that mindset, so and that's the key here. Carrot and stick. Yeah, definitely. Okay, definitely. Nathaniel Peake, thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you very us much. Thanks a lot.